Hello, and welcome to our series on making space rocks in Game Maker Studio 2. If you're relatively new to the world of programming, then this series should be a great introduction for you. I think one of the hardest parts of tackling a new skill can just be knowing where to start, and then setting achievable goals to make progress. When you're starting out, I've found motivation comes easily if you keep things simple, fun, and rewarding. And that's why we're going to be making Space Rocks. It's a great game for beginners to make, practically a rite of passage for new game developers. It's simple, but it's going to teach you the fundamentals of logic and game design. So if you're dreaming of one day building an RPG like Undertale, or even working on something massive like Skyrim, know that the concepts we cover in this series will set the foundations for your game development journey. In this first video, I'm going to take you through the Game Maker interface. So if you've just downloaded Game Maker and opened it up, you're probably going to see a window just like this. At the very top is our tools menu. Here is some recent promotional news from Yo-Yo Games. Over here we've got recent projects. This will probably be blank for you, but as you start to make projects, they'll appear here. And over here we have getting started, where we can start, load, and import projects. Down here is the explore section, where you can download some resources. So for example, we can click here and bring up a tab for the marketplace. And this is where you can download assets that other developers have created. These can be really helpful if you're a small or independent developer or just looking for some tools to make your development process a bit faster. Over here are some tutorials that are a really great introduction to the Game Maker interface from Yo-Yo Games themselves. So definitely consider taking a look at these if you're not sure about anything in the interface. And finally, here are some demos. So these are some games that come packaged with Game Maker, and you can take a look at these if you want to explore what a more developed project will look like. It might look a little bit overwhelming, especially for a beginner, but they do contain some great examples of how to implement game mechanics and how to use the Game Maker engine. All right, moving on. Let's go ahead and create our project. So let's click New here, and now we have two options. We can either make a game in drag and drop or Game Maker language. So these will just change the way that we go about making our games using either a visual scripting language, which is drag and drop, or using coding, which is Game Maker language or GML. So if you use drag and drop, you don't actually have to be typing any code at all. Behind the scenes, it still is actually using code, but it's represented in blocks of actions rather than code text. So your project is going to end up looking like a bunch of these blocks here chained together to create the logic of your game. And if you want at any time, you can actually bring up how those blocks are represented in code, as it might look if you had coded it yourself. On the other hand, if we make a Game Maker language project, we will be using Game Maker's scripting language, GML, to write the code for our games. There are going to be two different streams of this series that will cover making space rocks in both drag and drop and GML. So you can choose whichever you like. If you're not sure what to choose, know that both options are completely viable. In short, if you're an artist or a game designer and not very experienced with the programming, you might find that the drag and drop visual scripting is easier. On the other hand, if you're interested in learning to code, perhaps even moving on to a language like C Sharp or C++ at some point, then GML may be for you. I'm going to be leaving a more extensive comment on the pros and cons of using GML and drag and drop, so if you're having trouble deciding, feel free to have a read of that and reply with your own thoughts and questions. For now though, let's just click on either of these to open up a project and have a look at the interface. So this is a fresh new project. Right in the middle here is our workspace. This is where all of the editors are going to pop up and where we're going to do all of our work. And you can actually make multiple workspaces by just clicking this little plus up here. So you can have different editors up at one time, which might be helpful, for example, if you've got two monitors and you want to have two different displays of your project. So you can play around with these docs and put them wherever you like. And if you like the layout you have, you can come over to the tools up here, layouts, and save the layout. You can also load and reset your layout to default here if you've messed around with it too much and want to restore it to the default. Now down the bottom here, we have a few docked windows, and we can just open and close these here. And just note that if you quit any of these, you can bring them up again from the Windows tool up here, and just pull them down into the dock. You're probably not going to be looking at this too much when we're first starting out, with the exception of the output here, which is going to show up whenever you run and test your game. And basically it just shows what's happening when your game is compiling, and it might also tell you if there is a problem compiling. As for the rest of the tools up here, we have File, which has as normal options for opening and saving our projects. You can also open a new IDE here, so you can have two projects open at once. And also Preferences, which you might want to check out as you can actually customize a lot of the Game Maker interface here. 
So for example, you can change the language, the IDE skin, the background, and also change the colors of things like the resources as well as the font. At any time, we can also restore back to default. There are also some quick buttons here. You can just hover over these to see what they do. This one opens the start page, new project, open and save. We can create an executable here, which is what you'll be doing when you finish your game. This play button will run your game for testing, though you can also just press F5. Clicking this bug one here or pressing F6 will run your game in debug mode, which is basically a mode that can help you solve bugs and errors. This one stops the game. This one will clear the asset cache. Next we have game options, which you can also access down here in the options tab. And this is where you can set some important options for your game project, like setting your game frames per second, which you might know as FPS. By default, GameMaker starts this out as 30, so you might want to change this in your project whenever you start one. And you can also enable source control here. It will also show you when you first created your project and also how long you've been working on it. As you can see, you can also toggle drag and drop here. Next is the help icon, which will open up the Game Maker documentation. You can also just press F1 to open this as well. And this is actually really important. This documentation is a resource that you should come to rely on and pretty much be using daily, especially as you're starting out. It will have information about anything in Game Maker, from the interface itself to any function or block that you might want to use in your game for both GML and drag and drop. These three buttons here are for zooming in and out of the workspace. So if we just open that options tab back up here, you can see I can zoom in and out using these. This middle one will reset it to normal. Note that you can also just use control and scroll to zoom in and out as well, or the command key if you're on a Mac. Scrolling normally will move up and down the workspace. You can also middle click and drag to move around. Finally, this last button will dock and undock all of the dock panels. You can also press F12 for this. Another couple handy shortcuts that you might want to use in your project are Control Shift F, which will allow you to search for any piece of text in the entire project. And you can also use this to replace any word for another, which can be really handy for renaming variables or functions. Control T is also a really great one because it allows you to move to any resource quickly, which can be great when you have large projects with lots of folders. You can check out a list of the other shortcuts in the documentation page for shortcuts. All right, so that's it for the interface. Let's move on to the resources panel. And this is the real heart of the project. Everything that you work on is going to be stored here. So if you think about all of the elements that make a game, sounds, objects, fonts, images, these are all going to be a different type of resource that is going to be stored in each of these sections depending on its type. Three of the most important ones are going to be your sprites, objects, and rooms. And we'll go into these in more detail in the coming tutorials, but for now I'll just introduce them to you. So a sprite is going to be any image that is in your game. So all your characters, all of your backgrounds, all of the tiles, those are going to be represented in Game Maker as a sprite. So let's go ahead and create a new sprite by right clicking here and hitting create sprite. So the new editor is going to pop up here and it's going to prompt you to also name your sprite. So you can call it whatever you like, but the convention here is to put some sort of prefix to indicate that it is a sprite. And we do this for a couple of reasons. So one, if we ever refer to this resource, we know what it is because of its prefix. So it helps us with organization. And the other reason is that you can't call two different resources the same thing. So for example, if I had an object called a cat and I also wanted to create a sprite for it, I can't call both of them cat. Game Maker isn't gonna let me do that. They have to be unique names. So I'll have to call the sprite something like SPR cat and the object OBJ cat. All right, so just hit enter when you've decided what to name it. So if you want to load in a sprite from an image you saved on your computer, you can just hit import here. But you can also create an image from scratch in Game Maker by clicking edit image or by double clicking here on the frame. So this will bring up the sprite editor, which is a lot of the functionality of other drawing programs. So you can see that our picture is showing up in the preview now here. We can change the size of the image over here, and we can also set multiple frames for the image so that it is animated. We can preview the animation and also change the speed. All right, let's move on to objects. So now objects in programming are where all of the magic happens. Essentially, they're the same thing as what objects are in your mind. So think of an object, say a cat. Your brain stores a bunch of information about what a cat is. It has properties like has a tail, has good balance, has four legs, and is a feline. And it also has behaviors like purr and meow. And this is exactly what objects are in programming, except we get to make them up. 
So I can create an object, such as obj ball, and then give it certain properties. I can also outline behaviors for it to perform, and these behaviors will all be dictated by specifying an event and then an action. And in fact, we can boil almost all logic and programming down to this sort of description. If this, then that. And this is exactly how GameMaker has structured objects. We get them to do things by adding events to them. So if we click on add event here, these are sort of like the triggers for behaviors to happen. So for example, let's choose the create event. So now anything that we put in this create event is going to be run when the object gets created. We've kind of said if created, then do this code. We'll be going into this editor in a lot more detail in the coming tutorial. All right, finally, let's talk about rooms. By default, GameMaker has already created a room for you. So let's just double click on it and open it up. So this will bring up the room editor and a room is kind of like a level in your game world. So this is where everything will need to be placed to make up your game. So we can move around the room just like we can move around the interface. So scrolling normally, we'll move up and down. We can middle click and drag to move around and also use the control or command and scrolling to zoom in and out. Over here is the properties doc for the room. So we can set some basic properties of the room here, such as its width and height. Up the top here is the different layers in our room. So in GameMaker, just like there are different resources, there are different corresponding layers that are going to hold those resources. So as you can see by default, we start off with an instances layer and a background layer. We can also create other layers here, including other layer types, such as tile layers, path layers, asset layers, and folders to help us organize our layers. In the background layer, you can make this just one solid color, or you can assign a sprite to the layer and have it display that image and even tile it. So the instances layer is where we're going to be placing all of our objects. And now let's just think about that word instances for a moment. So remember my example about the idea of what an object like a cat is in your mind? If you think about it, that concept of a cat is abstract. It doesn't exist in the real world, but instances of cats do. It's the same with objects in programming. When we drag an object into the room, we are actually creating an instance of that object. And those individual instances will perform the same code and have the same properties that you outline in your object. But you can also assign them unique variables, just like how instances of cat in our world have unique properties to them as well. So that's it for now. In the coming tutorials, we're going to be jumping in and starting to make our Space Rocks game. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.